I'm James the Box Office Artist, and thank you uh, for clicking that play button to see me draw this tutorial on comic book style rendering. And I want to first of all thank all of you who came over from my buddy Jazz's channel. Uh, thank you for watching that video over there. So this is part two of that. So if you guys haven't seen that video, please go over to my friend uh, Josiah Brooks Jazz's channel. Uh, go to youtube.com slash draw with Jazza, youtube.com slash draw with Jazza, and you will see part one of uh, me drawing this Black Pan Panther piece uh, in a tutorial over there where I talk about dynamic figure drawing. And now I'm going to do a tutorial on comic book style rendering where I'm going to take the drawing I did there and I'm actually going to go and render it or ink it, okay? Now rendering is uh, a good term uh, where we talk about, you know, kind of tightening up, tightening up the drawing, okay, making it clean, okay, and you could do that with a pencil, you could do that with a pen. Now, for me personally, I like going for my rough sketches right into ink. Maybe that's not for you, you would like to do pencils first. Either way, you could use these methods. So with that, there are three styles of rendering I'm going to show you today. One is a very minimal minimalist uh, version of rendering, okay? So pretty much just like uh, like heavy outlines and uh, you know just enough lines for information, a very more simplistic style, okay? The second one I'm going to show you is one that's a uh, little bit more sim that is simplistic but a little bit more complicated in which we will be more in control of the lighting situation by adding blacks under certain areas of the drawing. And the third is where we get detailed, and that's my personal style. That's where when we start uh, having things like hatching and starting having the light gradate over certain parts of the body. So I will go over those three, and then we have a hyper detail, which is really me, okay? Where I even add even more on top of that, and that's my current style. So I will bring you through those three, and you can decide which one is best for you, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so the material I'm going to be using to uh, actually render this is uh, Micron pens. You could use Prismacolors, you could use whatever really you want. Uh, here's a Micron pen, and actually I'm going to be using a, uh, this is a point .1, this is a 1. Uh, because I'm going very large, I could go with a thicker uh, ink pen because it's so large and it will reproduce smaller for sure. Now, it's up to you guys. If you want to use a pencil, you can. Honestly, any material. At this point, material doesn't matter, okay? I'm, I'm just going to show you guys styles, okay? So the very first one I'm going to do is a very minimalist style. Now, the thing about this Black Panther, though, uh, Black Panther, the actual design of him, it's actually very, very complex itself, right? There's a lot of lines. So I'm going to be... Um, Staying true to the uh, movie character costume, okay, but I'm going to do it in a very simplistic style. Now you'll find the li line weight is very important, and that's one thing we're going to point out here is line weight, okay? Uh, where do we th put thicker th lines? We're going to put thinner lines. So I'm going to start out with the thin line, like the basic me size lines. Uh, that's what I'm going to do uh, for this particular one here, okay? So I'm going to get started on that right now. Now the point of these lines is to give the colorist, whoever's going to colorist, control over the shadow, where the shadow is coming from here. The, base, the main part of the rendering here is that I just throw in where the detail will be, and in this particular style, it is the colorist who decides where the lighting is going to go, okay? So I'm going to get started in putting in the details right now.
So uh, this this costume is so detailed. Uh, there's all these little lines and all that stuff uh, with the movie costume. But uh, to finish this particular uh, style off, we need to go and thicken up some of these lines, especially the outer lines and where we, you know, where you can reach the hand around. Now, I've talked about this before. It's uh, the li the lines where just it, imagine a spider, a spider crawling across, for example, his chest. And when you can't see the spider anymore, that's the line, okay? That's the line. Those are what we call edges. Then that's where we're going to thicken up the lines. And what will that will do, that will help uh, certain areas pop a little bit, okay? So we're going to do that, and that will finish off this first style, okay? Which is a little bit more simplistic style. So let's do that. Okay, so uh, so this is the first style, okay? It's very, very clean, okay? Well, yeah, my line quality could be a lot better for sure. But as you see, all the lines that are inside, it's pretty much just all detail. Like all, uh, you know, all detail, like uh, outlines of muscles, uh, costume detail. So something like this, you would, uh, you would hand in, and then the colorist would be the one to say where the lighting goes. You give the colorist complete control when you do something like this. Okay, so this is the first style. Admittedly, this is not my style, okay? I personally like to control uh, where the lighting's coming from. So, in order to do that, okay, there's a different style which is still clean, but you start laying down a little bit of black and shadow, okay? Little bit of shadow, okay? So the first thing to do whenever you're doing something like this is to decide where the lighting is coming from. Where is the lighting coming from? and then you could lay down your blacks, okay? So for example, I think for this particular piece, I want the lighting to be coming maybe from up here, okay? So you can't, you cannot, you cannot, I'll, lay, I'll say this right now, you cannot lay down thick blacks without knowing where the lighting source is coming from, okay? Because then you're just going blindly, everything won't match. So once you have an understanding where it's coming from, then you could go ahead and draw. So I'm saying the lighting is coming this way. This is where the lighting is going, okay? So when I know that the lighting is going, where's the, the black's gonna hit? Well, it's gonna hit this side. It's gonna be hit this side of the neck. There's gonna be darkness around here. Now, when you're thinking of lighting, uh, you gotta think about a three-point lighting system. If you guys don't know what a three-point lighting system, what that is is you have a fill light, which is the light that actually comes like directly from the camera, okay? The light that's near the camera, fill light, the key light, that's where your main lighting source is. So that's the line we draw here. And then you have a rim light. So that's why you see sometimes, like even though it will be black here, you'll still see like a little bit of white rim here. Like that's a, like we call that a rim light. So you'll see an extra white line that would go around here in the back. It's like a light is shining on the top and going down. So that's the three point lighting system, okay? So you got lighting for the top, a lighting here, Okay, that's your actual light, and then you have a fill light, okay? So that's what we use in photography as well. But we're going to use those same principles when we go ahead and lay down some black. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to assume the lighting's here, and I'm going to start filling in black in certain areas and try to keep that clean, okay? So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, so because uh, how complicated uh, Black Panther's costume is, for example, you see these lines here, and, they, and um, this material, they kind of protrude out, so we want to have that feeling, okay? So when I'm adding the black here, I am leaving these little white lines that are here. Now, I'm carefully doing this with my marker, okay? Now, I could just fill it in and then draw this in with like a whiteout, like I could do that, and if I make a mistake, I might do that, but... Um, I'm gonna just try to freehand this very, very carefully. So what I'm trying to do right now is cast a shadow around the chest area here. So I'm imagining the chest area is here, so I want some shadow. Now, uh, the thing about this Black Panther, it's a very, very complicated costume. So with that, you have to keep in mind where everything is here, okay? So I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm leaving these little white lines just to uh, make it look like these little parts of the costume are actually protruding out of the costume, okay? So here's a little trick too. Uh, when you are inking, because I usually don't, um, I don't fill in with these kind of markers, I will usually use the chisel tip to fill in. I'm using Sharpies by the way. Usually I would use the chisel tip and then in places I know to use the chisel tip, I would actually go and put X's in them. I'll just kind of outline it and then put X so I know to fill that in a little bit later. Okay, so I don't always have to go back and forth with my markers. Because I know this particular area here, a lot of this will be in shadow because the light is going here. Okay, so I know that this area is going to be in black. This area is going to be in black. Okay, and then I'm leaving little grooves here so we can still see some um, detail but still have it black. Okay, so only, oh, again, only for the big areas here, okay? There you go. So right now what I'm doing is I'm maintaining trying to maintain these lines that I had here in the blue line uh, but this would be the rib cage area so the light would come so this part would be kind of brightened up but then we would go kind of underneath the rib cage here okay so you see I have a line that goes like that so I want to try to maintain that line with my black here okay so hopefully we can achieve that, but we will see here. So as you can tell, a lot of this stuff here, I'm kind of making up as I go along. Okay, so where these uh, little you know bits are you know how the lights gonna affect all these bits I'm strategically thinking right I'm always thinking when I'm laying down these blacks every single uh, piece of black I lay down I'm thinking that the light is coming this way okay so that's why I'm starting with the really thick blacks and then I'm actually going to reinforce a lot of these lines because when the light hits for example these little shards oops ding these little shards they're metals and they would actually cast a tiny tiny bit of shadow now this marker might be too thick for that that's why I'm holding off on that okay but everywhere I think will be blocked somehow by shadow that's what I am filling in right now
Okay, so just about done uh, this type of uh, rendering here where you see it's, it's all black, right? All of these are black, you know, it's just filled in black. Now the thing with Black Panther is his costume's black, okay? So uh, with that, like of course you're gonna get more black areas than you would if it was like just a regular person, but you could see you definite definition of where the lighting is like the other side. Unlike uh, the other version that we did where the lighting, uh, we're giving the colors free control, we are not in this situation. We are saying, oh no, lighting is this way and deal with it. That's what we're saying over here. So you gotta figure out, you know, which body part is blocking what. In fact, maybe there should be more black over here on this side and I might even go in and thicken up some of these lines actually I think I will take a second here black that up and then I probably will thicken up these lines just a little bit more just so the just so the lines will you know match with what's going on there right so that already looks a little bit better there okay so uh, with that um, just to finish off this particular style, what I'm going to do is, do you see these uh, particular lines that are going here? The shadow is still hitting uh, these pieces here. Now these are metal, so there will be some sort of drop shadow on these little pieces of metal. So I'm going to go in with a thicker, with a thicker uh, micron, this is a 0.5, and I'm actually going to go and thicken up where I think there would be shadow in these areas. So let me, let me do that right now. Okay, so here is the uh, second uh, style of rendering where it was all black, okay? So I added in the little shadows to the lines. So that's all well and good, okay? So a lot of people would stop here. In fact, this might be overboard when it comes to the blacks, right? But uh, as you guys know me, I do not stop here, okay? And that's when we start going into something called hatching, okay? A lot of guys do this, Jim Lee does this, like all the... All the, you know, the 90s uh, comic artists, they all use some sort of form of hatching. What all hatching is, it's a way to gradate light, okay? And that's what hatching is. We said before light's coming here. It's a way to show that light is going around, okay? It's going around a certain part of the body here. It, like, as most light, it's not clear cut like this. There's no sharp light like this unless the light is ex extremely strong. So, for example, you see my hand here. Like you have light that's like really dark here because I have a light coming coming this way and uh, you can see that the light sometimes it gradates here, gradates over. So how do you show that light is slowly transitioning from light to dark? How do you show that? And that is with the style that we call hatching, okay? And that's one thing that I like to use a lot is hatching. So I will go over that quickly with you and I'm going to do that with my thicker pen here, the 5. And a good place that hatching is, uh, like around here, around the quad here. So I'm going to show that, okay? So it's just to show that it's round. So what we do is we'll take this and we'll just do lines that kind of point out around, like this. So you could see that. Here we go. Like, you see how it's going around like this? Right? So th what this does. It makes you feel, first of all, it gives this uh, particular part muscle, it gives it depth, depth, it gives it roundness. Sometimes I'll even go all the way around with a few lines, just so it's known that this line is going all the way around here like this. And then I will add more hatching like this. And around like that. So these are, these are hatching lines here like this, okay? So multiple lines that go straight across. Now some artists, they'll take that a step further and then add some more lines going the opposite way. And that, as you can see, 
that adds it even more, right? And then you get looser down uh, as I get up. This particular style is called cross hatching. So we have the hatching, that's one line going this way. Cross hatching is when you uh, add more going the other way. Now this style, of course, it takes a lot longer, but it, it does add a lot more depth, a lot more you know interest into your drawing. So that's why I personally use a lot of cross hatching, right? And then sometimes I'll even add a little bit more here. That's a style thing. So I will go and add hatching like this in the direction where the lighting is. Okay, so I'm gonna add more here. Okay. And I'm gonna go around and keep keep doing it, okay? So as you can tell here, I'm adding and you notice my lines are going a little different direction than this because I'm going with the curve of the actual muscle here. And this, uh, in this case, it's the kneecap. I'm going with the curve of the kneecap here. Okay, so you see how much that, even something a little bit like that adds, a little bit like that adds to the interest of the light hitting, okay, this particular leg here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of this, okay? So I'm gonna speed this up, but because I know this video is getting long already. So uh, let me, I will do that, and then I'll show you little extra things that I add to make this even better. Okay, sometimes I, uh, you know, we, we had lines that going around the shadow area, which I've added in here. And then sometimes I add lines that will help, you know, maintain form. For example, in this forehead here, like this, this would be the top of his forehead, and then this is going, like, round to the back of his head. So with that, I want, like, some lines just so I know that this, this, you know, this forehead is transitioning. So this is more the top of his head as opposed to the front. Of his head, so I would do that by just adding, adding some more lines here. Okay, I'm gonna do some more lines here because this would be like if um, he wasn't wearing a mask, like this would be the equivalent of this is where his hairline would start, going around here like that. So I would add lines that would go around here like this, and really it would just help define this particular shape. And then I might add some more lines here, going back like that. Okay, so I would do that. I would do that pretty much everywhere. Uh, like for example, here back at the shoulder, we're trying to make this feel round. You know, we want this to feel round instead of flat. Uh, like a lot, of, like a lot of you have sent me drawings, and uh, I think that's one main thing that everyone seems to have an issue with is making your drawings feel round. You know, feel dimensional as opposed to something that's flat. Um, and this is one way to do it. Okay. Adding these lines here will give it that dimension, okay? So imagine that this is round, as opposed to like this flat, everyone's thinking in terms of flatness. You gotta think of everything in 3D, and that will help your all of your drawings immensely.
Okay, so with that, okay, so I added all the hatching. Uh, honestly, I could I could go to town with hatching. I always had probably more than less. Uh, not saying that you should. Uh, they do have a saying where uh, less is more. And honestly, that's that's very subjective. That's up to you. If you feel you know a minimalist is more for you, absolutely go for it. You know, it might be less confusing. Uh, me personally, I like going into this much detail. Now, so one thing to keep in mind is the actual material. So. Like this part made of carbon fire, but there are parts, elements of his costume that are actually metal. And the way you would render metal is a little bit different than how you would uh, render something that is more like a carbon fiber or a cloth or even a leather. Okay? So for example, these, these little bits here, these are leather. Like these are leather and uh, the carbon fiber and the leather, like, they are different. If you look at them in real life, they are pretty different. Uh, but in this particular instance, I don't think it's uh, I don't need to render them that much differently uh, Like uh, the leather would be pretty much smooth like for example this part here This part in here. This is leather, right? And then this part out here is carbon fiber. So uh, But for me my personally my style. I don't really render those that much differently uh, Hopefully the colors will help uh, draw the difference between that if necessary, but things like metal is completely different completely different for example, these parts here, these parts here are metal. These parts here, they are metal, and then they would, um, you know, they would go differently. So when you render metal, you got to remember that metal reflects. Okay, metal reflects. So what we have to do is kind of mimic like uh, reflection lines when it comes to metal. Okay, to make it look. That's why when you see metal, you'll see things like this. You'll see like little areas like this like these little wavy lines and that's you know usually comic artists they do their metal by using wavy wavy lines for example do lines like this and then they'll be like multiples you see that there that's how we get the feeling of metal okay and what we're really trying to do is mimic reflection in these shiny objects okay and usually we do that by little wavy lines like that okay that's how we try to get that mimic that sort of metal feel. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that quickly to that. And also, you notice, that like the, for example, parts like this, this area here, uh, these are metal too. These parts are metal too. So sometimes I would have like little little nicks here and there, just to kind of distinguish it. Right? It's a very subtle thing, in all honesty, it's a very subtle thing, and it's something you don't really have to do. It's just something for me personally, I like to do. See, so add it here. Here, like that. That's what I'm doing when I'm, when I render things like metal. Like his claws. They are completely metal, his claws. So that's why I add things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off uh, the metal bits and then I'll show you guys some finishing touches. Okay so with that, uh, so I just add a little bit here and there but as you can see it added a little bit to here. Now I'm just going to add a little bit finishing touches okay. So uh, things I like to do to finish off these type of drawings is add like little nicks here and there just to give it you know be less perfect because not everything in life is perfect so you would have little dents and little nicks and knacks here and there uh, something that I, I, I liked from Stephen Platt's work and from David Finch's work he will have little like spots right that kind of represent dirt it just adds that extra bit of life to these particular drawings. Here's metal again, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of metal touches here. As you can see, those wavy lines that I talked about, just add that there, but then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little mix here and there. Not too much. I'm actually going to go and add a little bit, a few more lines here like this, and then add a little nicks here and there.
And hold on, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more there. And that's pretty much it, okay? So that's that's uh, the third style, okay? And pretty much my style, that's the more hyper detail um, style with extra blacks, okay? So that's usually how I do it, okay? Now first of all, I would like to apologize for the lower quality. I just realized that part of this was not in focus that well, but I hope uh, with this being smaller on your screen that uh, you were able to decipher what was going on. Um, and I apologize for that, but uh, I will do a close-up of this just so you could see the the lines here and how I did that. And there you have it. This is the final Black Panther image, or the, the full figure anyway. And uh, this is usually the stage I bring to all my drawings, okay? Um, I personally like it. That's my personal style. It's what I enjoy drawing. For you, it could be different. You could be happy, perfectly happy, and it could look wonderful right at stage one that we did in this video, and that's perfectly okay. That's all up to you and how you like to draw. Again, thank you to everyone who's followed me over from Jazz's channel to watch this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you like what you see and you haven't subscribed already, and you like the videos that are on my channel, please do subscribe to my channel, but only if you like the videos. If you don't like it, don't even bother subscribing. That's totally fine. I totally understand. But if you like what you saw, if you like my tutorials, please do subscribe to my channel. If you liked how my tutorial went, or if you have any comments or suggestions how I can make these tutorials better, please do comment below. Tell me what you think. Um, any suggestions you have of any other tutorials you'd like to see me do, please do let me know as well. Please follow me on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at Box Office Artist. You can follow me on Facebook at The Box Office Artist. And this is my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Box Office Artist. Thank you so much for watching. My name is James. I'm The Box Office Artist, and I'm here to say, keep drawing.